Hey, what is up, guys? I have some exciting news. Well, exciting for the people that want to use USB drives as internal hard drives on Xpenology or Synology, in this case, Xpenology. It seemed like it was a big problem moving out of 622, 623 from, from my previous video. I've done a little bit of backward engineering and, and spent far too much time downstairs in my office. My wife is like, what are you doing? I'm spending, I, I probably spent, I don't know, 20 hours trying to figure figure this out. So I have figured it out. I'm going to create a couple videos. This one will be for a fresh install of Xpenology. How do you use USB hard drives as internal hard drives? And this video should be pretty quick because it's pretty straightforward. You probably found this after you installed it, which I have another video on how to edit your config. So it will recognize your USB drives as internal hard drives. So if you are currently doing a fresh install, you should be very aware of how to install TCRP, how to create the, the boot disk and all that, yada, yada, yada. So I'm gonna skip all of that. Essentially, I am now at the point to where TCRP is loaded uh, into the bootloader. So you have not fully installed Xpenology yet, or, but you, you're in the bootloader, you're going through like, you know, create the serial number and create the Mac and all of that. What you're going to want to do, what I did, is I just SSH into that box with the IP address that it was that uh, that was assigned to it through DHCP. That's what we're looking at on the left. On the right, you can almost ignore that. We're in our SSH console, and what we're going to do is something that's very simple. We're just going to do a quick sudo vi user config.json. Now, as a part of the tutorial, they did talk about you can edit this file. This is something that's okay. If you want to go in there, you can verify your serial number, your Mac, the model number, et cetera, et cetera. So we can do that here, sudo.vi, and yours may look a little different than mine, but uh, Z image hash and RD hash, maybe the USB and satellite lines, those will all be blank. That is completely fine, that's a fresh install. Mine is not a fresh install, but th that doesn't change what I'm showing you here. What you're gonna wanna do is scroll down to this uh, extra command line where you have PID, your vid, your serial number, your Mac. These are not real serial numbers or Macs, I just made these up. Scroll a little bit further, you're gonna get the Sino info. And you're gonna see right here, internal port config, internal port CFG. All we're gonna to wanna to do is scroll over and I'm in VI. If you're not familiar with VI, hopefully you are, but if you're not, once you're in it, you hit I to insert. Then we're gonna do an FFF. Uh, that's essentially, that's 40 internal hard disks. So 40 devices will all be detected as internal hard disks. If you wanna change the max disks, you can, you're gonna get mixed results. I've changed it, to, I think, to like 32 or 48 with a 918 plus and it, it, it wouldn't even boot, it bricked it. Um, what I read or found out was 24 is the max, I think, on, the, on a 918 plus. 16 is plenty. 16, uh, if your USB drives enumerate as like disk 38, that is that, that may happen and that's fine, but if you only have one internal disk and one external disk, that's only two of the 16. And the reason I know this is because mine enumerated is like 21 and 22. Well, if I only have 16, like how is it finding 21 and 22? It's because it's the total number of disks. At least that's the way I understand it. And based on anecdotal evidence, um, that's what I'm seeing. So we're gonna add another line. So just hit enter, space that out, go up, quote. We're gonna call this one USB port CFG. And you want to leave it just like that, zero times zero. Now, if you have some weird configuration where you need one of your USB drives to be detected as an actual USB drive, and this does not apply to your boot drive, your boot drive is taken care of, so we don't have to worry about that. This is just external hard drives that are not your boot drive that will be detected as internal hard drives. So we need to add that USB port config zero times zero. And then the last thing we're going to add is another entry. And just, just for safe measure, this one's eSATA. So if your board has eSATA ports, again, you, you're going to need to experiment with this. Um, I, I talk all about how to configure this in my previous video. I don't want to repeat all that if you're curious on how to, if you wanted a couple USB drives and an eSATA drive, but the rest of them found as internal hard drives, go to my, my uh, Xpenology Synology 6.2.3 use external hard drives is internal hard drives video. I explained it all how to do that. I don't think a lot of people are gonna have that configuration. A lot of people probably will have this configuration. So it's gonna be eSATA port config. What this is doing is disable USB ports and disabling eSATA ports 
to be detected as USB ports respect, uh, and eSATA ports respectively. All the ports, all the devices will be, will be detected as internal hard drive. So again, if, if your configuration is not that and you do have eSATA drives or you do have USB drives, you want detected as USB drives or eSATA drives, then you'll need to, to play with this and experiment with it a little bit, which I explained in my other videos I mentioned. You then do a WQ for right quit, hit enter, and you are done with the modification. You can now do the build, follow the rest of the tutorial. You can now do the build and you will have all of your devices, USB, eSATA, and internal hard disks detected as internal hard disks. So you can use them as RAID arrays or, or however you need to within your configuration. I hope this video helped. I was pulling out my hair a little bit trying to figure this out. It's actually a very simple solution. Now, if you also have another configuration of Xpanology with TCRP, it was booted with TCRP, I will have another video on how to modify that at a live version, right? You're already configured TCRP Xpanology build. I'll have another video. You can search my channel for that video. It's a little bit more in depth. You got to do some extra steps. And that's where the code on the right comes into play uh, that I had the backward engineer. Anyways, I hope this video helped. If it did not, or you have any comments, please drop a line below. I appreciate any feedback and thank you. See ya.